Hey everybody, today we are editing sports images and we're doing it in a way that produces both the best quality and in a reasonable amount of time. Let's go. All right, folks, so here's my process for maximum quality photos. First, we're gonna call in Photo Mechanic. I shot a baseball game. I'm gonna take those raw photos and we're gonna cut them down to a reasonable number. Then I'm gonna take those photos, those raw photos, bring them into my camera manufacturer's free raw editor. I'm gonna fix white balance, noise, and exposure. Okay, some really basic edits. Then we're gonna take all of those into Topaz Denoise for sharpening and denoise. I don't do any of that in Lightroom. Finally, we're gonna go into Lightroom for final edits and export. All right, guys, let's get into Photo Mechanic. So the first thing I wanna do is take my photos into a soft piece of software called Photo Mechanic. And the reason I do that is because Photo Mechanic calls photos like that. Compared to, for example, Lightroom, which takes forever, it seems like, to render the photo to cull through them, Photo Mechanic brings them up very, very, very quickly. So I highly recommend it. If you haven't used Photo Mechanic before and you're a photographer who shoots hundreds or even thousands of photos per assignment, Photo Mechanic is the way to go. Now you can do a lot of things in Photo Mechanic. I primarily use it for culling. You know, a lot of the pros that work for the media, they'll use it to insert metadata and it, it gives you the opportunities to insert all sorts of different things. Copyright, who's in the photos, model releases, you name it, you can insert it into these photos. But like I say, for me, for the most part, it's just uh, culling photos. And I'm gonna go through this very, very quickly. I'm not gonna go to a lot of detail. Basically, you bring up all the photos here. Uh, I tend to do it off my hard drive. Some people do it off the actual cards from their cameras. Like I say, I prefer to do it off my hard drive, so I'll download them first. So basically, you bring up the photos and you just start going through them. You can tag individual photos with a T on your Windows keyboard. And what it does is, it's a little check mark down here. And once you've got a check mark on it, you move to the next, say I like this one or this one, and you just keep on going through. You can also set this up to automatically advance once you've tagged a photo. So say we've decided we like these particular photos. What will come down here is I'll go to the main program and you can go over here under under edit and hit select tagged it'll ta you see they turned them yellow right here on the screen and from those go back over to file you can actually move those photos to and delete the originals if you like uh, to another location now after you've culled them i'm not going to do it here because uh, actually i've already culled these photos i just wanted to show you but another nice thing about photo mechanic is if you shot in both uh, raw and jpeg it'll do both files at the same time so you don't have to do them separately, which is kind of cool. So the next piece of software I want to talk about is your original ma camera manufacturer's raw editor. In my case is Nikon. If you have Canon, Canon has a raw editor. Sony has a raw editor. I can't speak for the others. But the reason you might want to use your original manufacturer's raw editor is because your camera manufacturers understand the raw photos that are coming out of your cameras. Adobe does a fine job of it, but they're not the ones who wrote the software for the, those raw photos. Your manufacturer did. So it behooves you to run your raw photos through your camera manufacturer's raw editor to get the most accurate color renditions. The other really cool thing about it, um, I can't speak of for Canon and Sony, but at least in the Nikon, and I'm assuming it's the same with the others, is you can basically manipulate your photos as if you were in the camera itself. You could take whatever the camera settings were and apply them to your raw photos and come out with a similar JPEG or TIFF file at the back end of it with the kind of edits that you would have done in camera. Except you could save it as a TIFF, which has a much higher pixel count than a JPEG, which means is you can edit it even further, uh, which you can't really do so much with a JPEG. So let me go through some basic steps in this NX Studio, which is Nikon software, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so first of all, over here in, in picture control, uh, it knows what my camera was, and I can set it to be camera compatible. Um, I normally shoot in standard. I can make, I can change this if I really want to. 
put it in monochrome. Basically anything that the camera normally would have done to a JPEG, you can do it here. Uh, the white balance is, I shot it as direct sunlight. You can see here is the original value, which probably makes sense because it's outdoors. Um, however, you can change the white balance right here any way you want to. Uh, this might come in handy if you didn't quite get it right the first time. And again, because it's your camera manufacturer's raw photo, it's probably going to be the most accurate. So we'll leave it at, at uh, direct sunlight. Exposure compensation, this doesn't really need it, so I'll leave it alone. However, I could change it if I really wanted to. Uh, active delighting, that's a Nikon thing. It brings up shadows, doesn't really need it. You can adjust uh, shadows, highlights. You know, Highlight protection means it brings down the highlights. Shadow protection. All that kind of great thing. One of the biggest reasons I like to bring it through this Nikon software is the noise reduction. So your camera probably does really good noise reduction if you shoot in JPEG, but you don't get that with raw photos. However, you can replicate that using your camera manufacturer software, and I love it for that reason. So I like to use the the, uh, the noise reduction that's in this software. I'm sure the Canon and the Sony software does the same thing. So you can do noise reduction right here, just as if this was a JPEG shot in camera. That way I can clean up a lot of this noise right here, right now, before it even gets into Lightroom. And quite frankly, Lightroom's noise reduction is not so great. I'm not really crazy about it. So I prefer to do it here. So with that said, that's really the things I usually hit. I don't hit sharpness because we're going to do that to a noise later. But what I'll do is once I'm pretty happy with these, I will just bulk export these as TIFFs into a separate file folder where then I'll run them through Topaz Denoise. All right, there you go. Okay guys, so you may have heard that, as even from Topaz themselves, is that you're supposed to use Topaz Denoise before you do any color corrections like in Lightroom or in this case I use it in NX Studio. In my experience, it works better if you do color corrections before you go into Topaz Denoise than after. If you take a RAW straight into Topaz Denoise and have it do its thing, I don't like the results. The, it, it retains that gray color that RAW files tend to have. I don't think it does as well with the noise reduction. I actually see noise still in there. I just don't think it works as well. Quite honestly, Probably the biggest thing I like about Topaz Denoise is the removal of grain and the sharpening. As far as the, the color noise, the little speckles of blue and green and stuff like that, that NX Studio does a great job. If you shoot JPEG, your camera does a great job. So that's why I, I wait until I've already done a little corrections and then take it into Topaz Denoise at a minimum. Usually if I skip the whole OEM software thing and I, and I go straight from say, uh, Photo Mechanic into Lightroom. I'll do Lightroom edits first, then I'll take it to Topaz Denoise. But here we are in Topaz Denoise. Let's run through it real quick and I'll show you what I normally like to do, okay? So here we have a, a photo and I intentionally picked this particular photo because very nice sharp eyes. Well, pretty well focused on the eyes. There's a lot of details in his beard and I thought it would be a good subject. So here's the, the overall view. It's right now set at low light. You can change the view here to compare all the different standards that they have. They have four different models. They used to have three. There's standard, clear, low light, and severe noise. Now I would tell you, if these were high ISO, low light situations, uh, I would go straight to severe noise. No if, ands, or buts, I wouldn't even mess around with the other ones. But it was a bright, sunny day. There were some shadowed areas, which there's probably gonna be some noise in there. Um, so a little more finesse probably involved in here. But what you see right here is I've got the original in the upper left, standard, which is the next, their bottom line, clear in the lower left, and then low light in the lower right. And as you look at these, I am seeing that I'd kind of like in the low light. We could try severe noise. We could try severe noise, see what happens there. And this has been updated, but I still like the low light better. I think, I think it just looks overall. The clear isn't bad either. I could kind of go either way, but the low light looks like it removes some of this graininess that I see in clear. So I think I'm gonna go with low light on this image. 
And because all these images are shot very similarly, uh, I'm not gonna screw around with all 600 some odd images and checking each single one. I'm just gonna do the whole darn thing. And quite honestly, I'm gonna use Topaz Noise auto settings because it does a good job. It's gonna read each individual photo and determine what needs to be done with it, either noise reduction or sharpening. I'll hit, I'll, we'll save it, I'll get it going. It'll probably do very little noise reduction. Uh, you know, it has a scale from zero to 100. It'll probably, a few digits on the noise reduction. Sharpening may be a different thing. Uh, it may do quite a bit of sharpening, which is fine because that's what I wanted to do. All right, let's hit, uh, we're gonna do all of them that way. And I believe they're all set up that way for low light. Yes. And I'm gonna save. As far as preserving the source format, do not do these into JPEG. I highly recommend you go into TIFFs or DNG. TIFF, uh, both TIFF or DNG retains the uh, original values, uh, highly editable. JPEGs, you're gonna lose value because they compress it and you're gonna lose pixels. You don't wanna do that when you're editing. So retain the highest level quality you could possibly get with pixels. So in this case, TIFF or DNGs. I'm used to doing TIFFs, so I'll just keep it at TIFFs. Uh, and since these went in as TIFFs, uh, we'll just leave it at the source format. Where are we gonna put it? I'm gonna figure out a place to put it and hit start. And it's gonna go to town. Um, each one of these images, let's see how long it takes to do the first image. So nine seconds, so not too bad. Now, I have 689 photos, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, this is one of those situations where I go find something else to do at this point in time, and then I'll come back to it. All right, let's let it go, and we'll come back to it when it's done. Hey guys, I know I came out of that last segment with Topaz doing noise, saying we were gonna do it in TIFF. Uh, I ended up changing my mind. I went with DNG instead, so we're gonna go with that. So remember, to recap, we've already done some basic, very basic color correction type stuff, exposure issues in the Nikon and NX Studio. And then we took it into Topaz Denoise. So right now, the photos in DNG format that are going into Lightroom are correct as far as colors or pretty darn close as they're gonna get. And they're gonna be as sharp and noise free as they could possibly get. So right now, all I have to do is just some basic edits and boom, we're done. All right, let's get going. Okay, so in this first uh, photo, and uh, you know, here's an interesting thing. As you can see, it looks overexposed. Um, I have found that when I take stuff through Topaz Denoise, which is part of the reason I kind of did it early on in the process, it tends to make things a little overexposed or blow out my highlights. I'm not really sure why that is. I'm sure Topaz could probably tell us why that is, but that's part of the reason I kind of do it earlier in the process before I do my final edits, because I don't want to have to do them again. But now that they're, all the noise and the, the sharpness has already been corrected, I know when whatever I'm looking at, uh, if it's not sharp now, it ain't gonna get any sharper. So if it's not sharp, I can delete it. And this is part of my other, part of my other culling process right here, the final part of the culling process. Because if it ain't right here, it isn't gonna get used. All right, well, let's get back to this photo. So we have this photo here, uh, the picture, and as you can see, the highlights indicated by red are kind of blown out and it looks overexposed. Interesting thing is, I don't think this photo was originally overexposed, but here we are. So let's start at the very top. You know, what I, with Lightroom, I like to start at the top and move up from there. So let's start with cropping. I'm just gonna go with the standard four by six here. I have presets that I prefer to use and that does some basic edits. I'm gonna tell you real quickly what those edits are. We'll scroll down here a little bit into the, the presence section right here. I add a little texture, a little clarity, um, some dehaze. I think it just punches up the photos and makes them look a lot stronger. Uh, scrolling down here, no noise reduction, no sharpening. We've done plenty of that already. I do make sure that my lens corrections are set up for Nikon, because that's what I shot it on. And you can see it pumped up some of the uh, highlights already. Not that that's a good thing, I still have to fix those. Now, so I already got some, some things going here as far as the edits are concerned. Now, I'm gonna do something, some people, some people hate doing this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I like to hit auto, just see what Adobe thinks it should look like, so here we go. Wow, well that doesn't look so bad. Um, I might have to use this. So, let's go down here. 
Uh, there's a little trick here. If you hold down the shift key while you're clicking on the double clicking on the white, it'll and do so on the blacks. It'll set the white and the black points, or what it believes to be the white and black points. So you can see uh, the highlights are no longer blown out. The blacks are in good shape. It's come down in overall tone quite a bit. Um, let me see here. What else can I do with this? That's about right there. So as you can see, it didn't take a lot of work to get it to where it is right now. I know we did a lot of work on the front end, but now I have an image that is as sharp as it could possibly be. The colors are in good shape and it's ready to roll. And I really didn't have to do a lot to it. I know I did a lot on the front end. I got that. But now that we're in Lightroom, I'm pretty much done and it's over. Now I can export this in whatever format that I need. Now I know some of you are sitting out there and you're watching this video and you're saying to yourself, geez, Jack, man, you took us through all these different steps. Why go to all that trouble? Why don't just take your raw straight into Lightroom? It's good enough. It'll get the job done. And for daylight photos, you may be right. I get, you know, I have done that before. When I'm in a time crunch, I just take it straight into Lightroom and do my thing. But my goal here was to provide a range of options and show you different ways to improve the color rendition, reduce the noise, uh, make the photos as sharp as possible, all in a fairly reasonable period of time. I know it takes longer, but if you have the time, I do recommend you try this technique out. What's to lose? Now, of course, if you disagree, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. While you're here, hit the subscribe and hit the like. And if you hang around to the very end, I'm going to post a couple of videos. Uh, one of them is specifically on high ISO, uh, low light uh, situations for editing. It's a little bit different than what I showed you today. Hang around for that link. I think you'll appreciate it and you'll like it, especially if you do those uh, night games like a lot of us other sports photographers do. All right. See you around.